Hi, Larry Toma on behalf of Unist and our how-to continuing series. Today we're going to talk about cool lubricators, how to unpack them, and how to set them up on your machine and make them successful. First thing we're going to do today, we're going to open the box. Now inside the shipping cart you'll find a packing list most likely and then a few other things. You'll find perhaps a system drawing, that, so it specifies the way your system was made, um, installation and operation manual, uh, a cool loop sample to get you started on your uh, MQL, material safety data sheet for the cool loop, always important, and then the base system will be inside the box. Okay, let's remove the unit from the box. Now once you've got everything out of the box, make sure uh, you have everything. And if you think you're missing something, whether it's a cool loop or an instruction manual or some part of the system, you know, make sure you contact us either at 800-253-5462 or email salessupport at unis.com. Now to continue, uh, the first thing we would suggest is that take out the installation and operation manual and read through that carefully. That will give you some good guidance as for how to set the system up. Included with the operation manual is a uh, brochure in our Kulu product and also some further instructions about setting um, the components inside the system. Once you've reviewed that, it's time to think about where you're going to mount the system and connect the air and position the nozzles. Now for the purpose of this demonstration, we're going to mount magnets on this unit. Your system may have come with magnets, um, or it may just have these through holes for mounting. There's four of them on each, on each system, and uh, that's one, another way to do it. Just attach them like so. Again, your system, if ordered with magnets, these would come pre-installed already. For purposes of demonstration here, we're just gonna mount this to this steel stand, which is like the side of your machine. One of the important things to do is to follow the directions on this small yellow sticker. It says, remove the towel from inside the reservoir before filling it with cool lube. That was in there so that it would absorb any excess cool lube that was used during priming. Now let's open the box using the manual clasp, or if you have a key lock, make sure you turn the key and keep those keys in a safe place. Now that we've got the unit open, let's review some of the basic components. We've got the air filter over here. We've got the pump stack. We've got the reservoir. And then the whole in case which keeps everything protected. For today's purposes, we're illustrating the manual valve option. This manual valve turns the air on and off to supply the power to the system. Moving the slide valve to the right turns the air on. Moving it back to the left turns the air off. Now your system may have a solenoid valve inside the enclosure or an air pilot valve, which is what we're going to use to interrupt the air signal to the cool lubricator. Now the air supply to the cool lubricator is a critical function of how well it operates. You want to take your shop air supply of full line pressure or if you have a regulator, you could regulate it down to 60 to 80 PSI, plug in your air connection and you'll be ready to go. The important thing to remember is we do not want to use lubricated air on the system. We have the air filter here to remove water and particulate, but we do not want oiled air going to the system. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to fill the reservoir with fluid. In this case, our Cool Lube 2210 product, which is great for non-ferrous materials. If you're going to be cutting or machining uh, ferrous materials, we recommend our Cool Lube 2210 EP. Now that we've filled the reservoir with our favorite Kulu product, the next thing we want to do is we want to bleed air out of the system and make sure that there's no air trapped in the, ca in the pump cavity here. Now the systems are primed at the factory, so all you should have to do is loosen this screw to 5 16 hex. You should have to loosen it only a few turns. You can see the fluid dripping out of there. You're going to want to put something under there to catch it. And once it's running, flowing freely, as you can see there, we want to tighten that back up. 
Now you don't want to over tighten this hex, just nice gentle snug. There's a nylon gasket on there. Now before we turn the air on to the system, let's review our system adjustments so that you can achieve the desired output and the desired spray pattern. There's three adjustments on a cool lubricator. There is the adjustment knob here for the frequency of pumping. There is the length of the stroke of the pump, which is changed with this knob here. And over here we have the air metering screw. This is what controls the flow of air out the nozzle. The factory setting for the pulse generator is 10 cycles per minute. That's changed by rotating the knob and lining up the dial with the detent on the block here. So you can see where you can change that for fewer or more strokes per minute. The pumps are preset at one full drop. This is a one drop pump. It has the red cap. Your system may have a black plastic cap on here which signifies a three drop pump. Or you may have the MV pumps which have a green band for one drop and a red band for a two drop pump. Regardless, all the way in clockwise is full stroke which is the longest setting. As you rotate backwards from there you're going to reduce the output until you're going to get all the way to the end. To adjust the MV pumps, remember they're turned in the opposite direction from the standard pumps. The system comes with the air setting for a coaxial line system at about three quarters of a turn out and a quarter of a turn out for a single line system. Using more or less air will give you a broader distribution or a tighter distribution of the fluid. Now in the cover here, we have a fluid air adjustments label, which reviews the settings I just talked about. Now that we've reviewed the system settings, let's turn the system on and see what the cool lubricator is meant to do. Now these are the factory settings on the fluid and the pulsing output and a full stroke. See how you can get a nice consistent spray pattern? It's moving the cardboard along. Now if you have too little air, I'll turn that down a little bit, you're going to see more of a pattern that's don't have enough, it's going to be a little spottier. You may be missing your tool and not getting it to the right spot. Conversely, if you turn the air up too high, you're going to get an undesirable condition. Maybe you can see the system is misting a little too much. Now you only want to set the air to the point where it's delivering a nice even flow of material right to the cutting tool or the saw blade. Well there you have it. Those are the basics for setting up your cool lubricator. Connecting the air, making the adjustments. In future videos we'll talk about how to position the nozzles properly. But for now, we want to make sure that you're happy and that you understand how the system works. If you have any questions whatsoever, please call us at 800-253-5462. Or you can check your manual that comes with the system. Or visit us at unis.com. We want you to have a successful application of Unist equipment and Kulu product so that you have good success with minimum quantity lubrication or MQL. We thank you for watching and we'll be back to you again sometime soon with more videos. 